Pelotero Pickle, episode 42, Memorial Day weekend special. A little shorter episode this week. Chris and I are just going to talk some hitting, chop it up a bit. If you think you like it, check it out. I just didn't make my D butt in the big leagues. Yeah, that would have been better. For everybody. How is the word debut pronounced debut? Explain that to me. It's probably some like French origin or something. I don't know. Why wouldn't you just spell it D-A-Y-B-E-W? I don't know. There's a guy on TikTok that does a lot of funny like wordings. Like he did one about like na- the naming of multiple animals or like how different words have the same meanings. It's pretty fun. I'll send you the TikTok. It's pretty funny. If I no, use pop up, I don't follow the guy. Pronouncing things incorrectly is really funny. That was a vine, though. That was back in the day. Vine. That, was a, that was a vine. Uh, no, this guy, he does like, he did one, it was like the the geese and goose, like that whole thing, and then moose and moose. <laughs> it was like, it's like a back and forth where like, he'll look this way, and he's like, what do you think about this word? And then he comes on this side, and he's like, let's call it this. And he goes back over here, and he's like, "Doesn't that, that wouldn't make sense, would it? He's like, no, just do it that way. I like it. <laughs> It's like just, there's some creative people out there. Um, that was my that was my TikTok segment. Um, let's talk Pelotero. Let's talk uh, Pelotero hit tracks real quick. Um, I know you've been on the phone a ton. I was on the phone all week last week. Um, the my biggest takeaway from the week was just that like there's a lot of people out there building really really cool facilities and really cool models that care a ton about helping players get better. Like there's just a ton of people out there that are working at it and trying and doing as much as they can for kids. Um, the coolest model that I came across was the yard in Rochester, New York. They have a really cool membership model. Is it Rochester, New York or Rochester? Oh, sorry, New- Rochester. I wrote Rochester, New York, but it's Rochester, Minnesota. Why is it? I was not. I was like, man, I, yeah. I mean, you're really familiar. That with was both. just like a Freudian, like, yeah. yeah, just, I typed Rochester and New York popped in my head, Rochester, Minnesota. And, uh, their membership model is like probably the cheapest in the country and pretty high volume, but the purpose of that was the best because it was all about creating accountability for the players. Like they just, they want to provide the facility as a tool to get better and they want players to be accountable and be self-directed and be motivated internally. And just had that conversation was really cool Um, that, you know, they're investing in technology. They're, they're working at it to give the players the best opportunity and you know minnesota's pretty cold weather northern climate so the resources there are needed if you're going to develop in this game i think there's so much to be said for being accountable at a young age uh learning how to be accountable and i, I certainly think that there's you can find guidance from people and like ask for help like i'm not saying don't ask for help or ask questions but I, I think you have to learn. Like you have to learn on your own. Like you have to figure it out. And I, it's so, it's so belligerently obvious to me now that I would just go down these roads of exploration if I was playing. Like if I was early in my career again, because like when I was young, I didn't, I didn't really explore things. Like I didn't, I didn't really understand how to explore things because I thought I thought I was supposed to do take every swing the same when I was young. I thought I like that was the way they taught us. Oh, you got to practice the same way. Like, it was like illegal. Like, we would have gone to jail if we tried to take a swing with a leg kick, if we didn't use a leg kick. And it's just so weird to me that I even watch it. I watch some guys now, and I was throwing BP, I don't know, a couple of days ago, yesterday, yesterday, um, to some of the Worcester Bray Parks players and really talented kids. Like, and even there, it's like I, I see just very one like one dimensional swings, I guess, like one dimensional. Does that make sense? Like yeah. you're either flattened down across or you're, you know, steep up and kill the bottom of the zone or whatever. And I'm like, tell, like, I like talking to you guys about like being able to, to, to adapt. And I'm not saying you're going to be per like, I think you're, you're predominantly one or the other, right? Like you're, everybody has more advantage either up with a flatter path or down with a steeper path. And but like I would throw balls to the zone 
the opposing zone of whoever's had that swing and they like they wouldn't even swing at it which in some ways i appreciate but in other ways i'm like we're in here taking bp like what are you like what are you trying to accomplish you know what i'm saying like what are, like what are you trying to get done in the cage and, and i even said to, to, to one of the guys i was like i love that you're not swinging at that but i hate that you're not swinging at it because why are you in the cage like what are you doing in here like and and i feel this compulsion to like talk about it and i hate it i hate that i want to talk about it because I don't know. I feel like I'm doing a disservice if I don't, but. I remember that we were in uh, the Velocity place with Rich Gedman in Shrewsbury back in off season between 2005 and six. Sudbury. Sudbury, sorry. Um, that back cage like tucked away in the back. And Rich Gedman, I was hitting and then every time I miss hit a ball, I would like try to fix that swing on the next pitch. And Rich was like, every swing is its own swing. Like you're trying, he like was like, you're trying to fix the previous swing with this swing, but that's, you need to take this swing. You don't need to fix that swing. Yeah. And I was like, what the heck is this guy talking about? <laughs> and I didn't get it. Like, I just, I was so concerned with like executing a swing that I had to fix it. And I had to like be methodical about it instead of being on time. And like, I, I had no rhythm. I was like, get the foot down, knob the ball. So if I, if I missed under, I had to get on top of the next one, which I think there's value to that, but it was like, I was correcting the previous swing instead of. Yeah, but there, there's, something, there's definitely something there, right? My, the biggest issue I feel like I had, nobody ever taught me like to explore with the bat. Like the, I didn't know I could explore barrel angles. Like the only thing I knew was don't wrap the bat and nobody said, Hey, make some angles or, you know, have better rhythm. I, I just thought that was as far as I could hit the ball and I could only hit homers to the full side. And then I, couldn't hit balls hard to right center and that I couldn't have ridiculous adjustability on breaking balls and be athletic. But now everybody knows that you're allowed to be those things. Now just get better at hitting, like get better at hitting, like figure out what it go, It comes back down to the conversation we're having with Mike about players. Just like, like I, I said, it build a database of information for every, for every situation. And that's like, that's what hitting is. I was talking to another player playing in the, in the Futures League. And uh, he was telling me he went took a BP at 9 o'clock in the morning for the night of a 7 o'clock game. And then went and worked out. And, like, you know, ha so he's working out for, like, three hours in the morning, day of a game, which is absurd in and of itself. I was like, sleep till noon, man. Like, that's what baseball players do. Um, and he went 0 for 3 in the game with three punch outs. And so I said – Oh, for four, still wait for you, dog. Nobody cares that you took BP. The game don't. Baseball don't care that you went and took BP. Like all the guys that have huge off seasons working out, baseball don't care. Like it doesn't care if you're the hardest worker. Oh, for four, still sitting there on opening day, dude. Like, and I, I say this to people all the time. Like, I, I don't want to take BP ever again. I would much like if I'm going to take BP, I might as well just go hit the game. Like, I need at bats. The measuring stick it's really hard to promote game success as the measuring stick. If you're a business, it's way easier to promote training. It's like the velocity training. It's really easy to say, Hey, look, your number went up. So you're better. Your oh. bat speed went up. So you're better. It's so much easier to promote that. Like, Oh, you achieved this number. So that means you're better and you're comparable to league average or you're better than league average. It's like, well, can you go out and do it? Cause you're not measuring the right thing. You're not looking at actual results. And then like the whole argument of like the results don't matter because you're going to look at, Oh, Hey, if your exit velocity is up, then you're better. And there's, there's validity to aspects of it, but it's not the only thing. But the whole, the, so like the whole premise behind what you should be trying to accomplish in batting practice is like, you should be trying to work on things that will help you get hits. Right. You should be trying to help you work on like work on things that will help you build information that you need, build a swing that you need in a certain situation of a certain game. I think that's what we've tried to accomplish with what we're building or what we have accomplished probably. And I love that there are places like, like the yard that are providing that place for hitters. And I think now it's hitters responsibility to go figure out how to hit. Cause right now ain't nobody hitting. Ain't nobody hitting. Not on the show anyway. A few guys here and there. The good guys are hitting. The ones that always hit. Yeah. It's uh, – the pendulum's going to swing. 
I went too far and now it's going to come back and it's going to go back and forth for a while. What if, what if zombies start playing instead of humans? Then where's the pendulum then? If zombies start playing? Is that a pendulum swing or do we, is that like a no? That's that, side to side. What is this going to go north, south? No, I just, I think it, that would be bad for the world if zombies were playing baseball. What if we had a 360 degree pendulum? A three like well there's you could do like three dimensions i don't know if like 360 degrees makes sense you're saying the pendulum is going to swing i'm just trying to be weird yeah you can go east and west forever but if you go north far enough you're gonna start going south yeah, Ooh. yeah. think yeah. about that <laughs> think about that you can always go east and west north becomes south all right i think that wraps episode 42 pelotero pickle Send your questions and topics to pickle at pelotero.com or tweet us or Instagram us. We'll see it. That's it.